Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Remy, and I'm one of the maintainers of BITS, the Brain Imaging Data Structure. And today I'm here with uh, Melanie and Martin, who uh, were the lead of the BITS uh, extension proposal for PET imaging. And I'm just going to, we're just going to quickly chat a little bit about that. So I'm just going to ask Melanie and Martin to introduce themselves, and then we're going to jump right in. So Melanie, you want to you wanna start? Sure. Yeah, hi everyone. So my name is Melanie Ganz Benjaminson. I am a researcher at the Neurobiology Research Unit of Ries Hospital, the National Hospital in Denmark. And half of the time, I'm also an assistant professor at the Department of Computer Science uh, of the University of Copenhagen. And uh, yes, I've been working mostly, I did a PhD in medical imaging and then been mostly working with neuroimaging data, both MR and PET, a little bit of EEG the last 10 to 15 years. Cool, brilliant. Martin, your turn. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Martin Norgaard, and uh, I'm currently a postdoc in, uh, in Russ Poldrack's group uh, at Stanford. Uh, but before then, I was also a postdoc and PhD at the Neurobiology Research Unit in Copenhagen. Um, spent most of my time on, on optimizing pre-processing for PET uh, and MR, so really digging into variability in, uh, in PET data. Um, so in general, really interested in, in working with pet data in all kinds of forms. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's the short version. Cool. Fantastic. OK, so I have just a couple of questions for you around the uh, extension pro proposal that has been just been merged. Uh, and I think I would like you to sort of give me briefly an idea of like the origin and of the BEP, where it came from and what's what's actually in it as well. Yes, so maybe I, I should. Yeah, maybe maybe I should start. So basically, I attended Nor Hack Week back in 2017, uh, and there I met uh, Chris Korkolevsky and Ross uh, uh, Poldrak and started talking to him. Chris Korkolevsky was at that point starting to uh, yeah to 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 work on. Uh, pet extension more extensively and he had some people on board for example he had used uh, some contact in the MiaCat program or contact to the MiaCat program which is a pet processing program and uh, some data format that is in there the .anc format in order to make a rough outline of the pet pep and then basically at Nor Hackwick he just uh, got in touch with me because I kept asking questions about can I use this for pet <laughs> and then he said hey you seem to actually know something about pet why, why don't you come and help me here? And then I said, oh, sure, I'd be interested in this. Now I learned about, you know, data standardization at NORHack Week and so on. Uh, of course, I'll help. And then I think six weeks later, back at home, I get an email from Chris with uh, Russ Poldrack and uh, my own boss, Gidemus Knus and NRUCC that basically said, oh, yeah, so Melanie's taking over. There you go. <laughs> And from there, poor Martin, who was at that time still my PhD student, got roped in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I, I can't say that, that I mean, these, you know, efforts, uh, they started also before then. And I, I think it was also back in 15, 16 that uh, we decided that we actually wanted to do a project on, on data sharing. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't get funded because... I think if you just go five years back, I mean, uh, there's not this big uh, fuss about data sharing, at least not in the pet community. So, I mean, we've received feedback. Oh, no, this is not novel enough, uh, data sharing. It's just, you know, aggregating data. Uh, what's the point of that? Um, so, I, I mean, I mean, and that's also why it's, it's been a process. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's actually what we're interested in doing now that we have the standard. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and now I'm actually, I would be just curious to have your take on the whole process of just like creating this extension to bits. Uh, so first of all, so how, like first, for example, how, how did you find it? How was the process? Was this just like, was there, uh, was it like very smooth and it went just fine and it was just easy peasy or was there like many sort of unanticipated difficulties and, and delays? Well, if if I may start, um, so again, I think I think the timing was pretty good um, because I mean, so again, going back several years, uh, there was a big conference in PET in 2017 uh, where basically the entire community they decided that they want to like facilitate PET data sharing. Um, but what they decided at that point was instead of just you know moving forward, they wanted like 
define, you know, what should be in it. We want the radio chemist, we want the pet people, the physicists, all parts of the of, of the pet experiment. Uh, and we want them to define what should be in a standard. Um, so where, you know, maybe some uh, uh, BEPs or uh, standards for, for bits, are uh, they're kind of like, it's a small group of people that want to, you know, like go like this. Instead, we started out here with all of the people and then had to, you know, like narrow it down. And I think it's that's why it took some time <laughs> to get it done. Um, but you know, I think I think the the outcome uh, is really great because you know, um, yeah, there's been so many people involved. Uh, we had a paper published before actually finishing the standard, where all the major pet expert experts have been uh, a part of it. Uh, so I think in that way, we we should expect that the community support is at least there um, from from day one, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything, Melanie. Yeah, like Mar yeah, like Martin said, we really went kind of more, uh, uh, I would say, instead of doing it bottom up, went top down in our in our uh, development. Uh, so that he covered very well. And yeah, the guidelines paper for how to publish and how to report on pet, pet studies was published uh, in 2020. And now the standard followed and we could take over large things there because the community had agreed on it by then. Um, maybe a little bit about the format. So uh, I know that we in the uh, uh, in the BEP process often start with a Google Doc, and that's also what we originally took over, which had been developed by some of the pet experts. And I think uh, actually for us, writing up this guidelines paper where uh, Martin and me were heavily involved in the two PIs of the Open Neuro Pet Project that's upcoming, a project for data sharing, both Gidemus Knusen from NRU and, and Bob Innes from NIMH, they were basically the first and senior authors of that and the drivers of that work. I think th that that just made our life a lot, lot easier when we then actually had to edit the Google Doc. And this was based on us, uh, you know, having different working groups uh, by writing up this paper that actually, you know, a radiochemistry working group and so on that gave us basically feedback with what tags would need to be there in a JSON file that we could then take over. So I think that that made it a longer process maybe than other BEPs because there were a lot of more different groups, like Martin said, but in essence, it also made it easier for us. And then uh, I would have to say that we went to GitHub quite late. And I think that is also reflective of the type of community we come from. GitHub is still not widely used uh, in the pet nor imaging community, especially not for you know working on projects together. So I think in that sense, we had to actually stay on the more email and Google Doc side for a long time to make sure to include enough people. Yeah, no, that's true. That's definitely something that the, the move to switching to using Markdown and GitHub to sort of write things, uh, it's, it's yeah, if you want to make sure to stay, to be inclusive and make sure everyone can just jump in easily, that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. That's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, but if, it seems it definitely helps to not start from a blank slate, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, and I think um, I'm, now I'm actually curious of what you're planning to do with this with this bet. Like, for example, what are the things that this uh, that being part of bids now allows you to do that you couldn't do before? So, what do you have in store next? Yes, yeah, so there our uh, big new initiative comes in, of course. So we have received uh, um, some funding here in Denmark by the Novo Nordisk Foundation to establish uh, Open Door Pet and uh, collaborators of us at the NIMH, again under Bob Innes, have received a, a, a brain initiative grant to establish the American side of Open Door Pet. So what we are basically building is an extension of the existing Open Door infrastructure, where the US side, it's relatively straightforward to implement uh, basically conversion to BitsPet and then to use the open neuro infrastructure. Um, and here in the, in the EU, it's going to be a little bit more tricky because we will take care of GDPR. We uh, have just been so lucky that we have had Cyril Pernay join us in our lab in Copenhagen. So he will be a huge help in trying to get all the legalities right. So then we will make a data sharing platform. And then Martin will come into play with all that he's doing uh, in Stanford right now. Yeah, so I'm I'm also very uh, you know excited to to yeah that this is finally out because um, a big part of what I'm interested in is to yeah share the data uh, and understand the variability and where this is 
for now been mostly focused around like within lab. Uh, this should facilitate the opportunity to go like between labs and, you know, um, yeah, just standardizing data and be a part of developing tools that can, you know, take data, put it through a processing pipeline, have a standardized output. Uh, I think it's a major help, um, especially when you've tried to receive data from a, a different center where some of it was in a text file and some of it was in a different file, um, different units, uh, like some of these basic things that can just, you know, uh, create a lot of, of issues. Um, so this like joint effort between standardization, standardization of data, uh, but also to develop, develop tools that, that the community can use. Uh, I really look forward to, to, to be a part of that. Yeah, that looks, that sounds really, really exciting. Really looking forward to what's, to see what's going to come out there. Definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. I just wanted to have a quick uh, chat with you to see what was going on and where we were going after this. So yes, thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Marlene, for joining me today. And uh, I guess for everyone, we'll talk, we'll see you all later. Bye.